I completely modernized this entire railing from this to this. If you want to learn how to do it, keep on watching. Let's get started. I'm sure in its heyday, this white oak railing was gorgeous, but after lots of wear and tear over the years, along with the fact that it just looks outdated, we've decided to completely modernize this entire railing structure with a brand new system from Stair Supplies. So I figured if there's any good place to start, it's gonna be here. This is the easiest straight run that we have in this entire area, so we figured let's start here, work on this area, and then we'll get to more complicated scenarios. Also, as you can see, these things are literally just falling off because all that comes with is this tiny little nub. That was easy. Everyone's railing system is going to be slightly different, but the same general principles are going to apply. The only other question is, is how is this original system installed in the first place? On this simple straight run balcony area, there were two screws on both sides and the core cap had to be drilled at first before it could even get to the screws. Keep in mind that if you do have any straight runs like this, it really is beneficial to keep them intact so you can actually acknowledge the exact angle that you need already, as well as the length that you need, because you already have a perfect template for that area. I'm applying a piece of tape at this location, which is not really protecting the wood in this application. It's merely trying to acknowledge where that cut line is, so I know exactly where I need to cut it. I am using a fine finish blade, which is definitely preferable in this circumstance because of how accurate these cuts need to be. Now I could install this railing as is, but after discussing it with stair supplies for a little bit further, I decided to go with a rosette on both sides. This provides a bit more stability and strength for this railing, plus it makes it a lot easier to install. Just make sure you're actually acknowledging the thickness of those rosettes on both sides, and I cut the railing down accordingly. Once our rosettes are installed on both sides, I then bring it to the opening and dry fit it in place. At this time, if you do want to make slight height adjustments in your railing system, you definitely can. Just double check code requirements in your specific state or area because we do want to be as safe as possible. In my state, you're going to be looking at something that's going to need to be between 34 to 38 inches tall, and that's from the very top of the floor to the top of the handrail. As I noted earlier, these rosettes really do make the installation process even easier because I'm able to pre-drill my holes within the rosettes and then drive screws directly through our rosettes into the framing in the back. With our railing level and fully secured, you may be wondering yourself why are we just drilling straight through our rosettes, which leaves an unsightly hole. Well, that's where our plug system comes into play. You can purchase pre-manufactured plugs, but those plugs generally don't match the finish exactly the way I would want it, which is why I'm going the alternative route in making my own plugs. This simple little device creates a plug perfectly to fit the 3 8 hole that I just drilled, and therefore I have the perfect size along with the same finish because I'm using a scrap piece of the railing so it matches very nicely. Once the sides of the plugs are slightly sanded down, I then install them, try to match up the grain as best as possible, and give them a few love taps in order to encapsulate those fasteners for eternity. With one handrail done, I move on to the second and much larger handrail, which starts with the newels. These are box newels by Stair Supplies as well, and they come in a multitude of styles, sizes, stains, and finishes. And no, the railings are not going to be this high, they just come long and we have to cut them down to size. I do account for the existing railing height and make sure that is accounted for on the new knolls. In order to make the demo portion of this project a little bit easier, I bring out my reciprocating saw. It makes quick work of any of these old railings, just make sure when you're doing this that no one is expected to come up or down the stairs or at least try and block it off as best as possible. And as you can see, these existing balusters are truly just hanging on by a thread, which is why I'm not surprised that a number of these balusters were already missing before we even got to demo. Now, box nules can be installed in a multitude of ways. Unfortunately for us, the existing box nules were installed even before the flooring was installed. That means that they were very securely in place, not going anywhere unlike our balusters, but that also means that I had to get creative when trying to remove them. 
I busted out an oscillating multi-tool, which took care of the remaining box newel. However, it cuts smoothly, but not a perfectly smooth surface, so I did have to sand it flush. Once sanded, I laid out our center mark, and now it's time for our sure ties. This is a newel fastening system, which basically means that we have a very structurally sound secure newel without it being fully framed into our subfloor like the existing ones were. This does require a bit of drilling though. We actually have to take a 3 8 inch drill bit and drill down at least five and a half inches. We then take a 5 8 inch drill bit and drill down approximately an inch down just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves when it comes to installing this large screw. And when I tell you this thing is a beast to get in, it is truly a beast. It took a considerable amount of strength just to get this thing fully seated. And just remember that the larger your wrench, the easier it's going to be. Now that our sure tie is in place, I then have to account for the overall height of our posts. That means that we have to cut these down to size based on where I want our handrail to meet our newel posts. In all honesty and full disclosure, there was a misunderstanding between me, the client, and the supplier, which is why we have such a high accent head on these posts, which some people may love, but in this circumstance, my client did not, so we wanted to make it easy on everyone, and I just cut them down accordingly. Luckily for us, these things are rock solid, and all it's going to take is a little sanding and finishing to match. On the bottom of this newel post, we're going to have to prep for our sure ties. That first means finding the dead center at the very bottom and then measuring up five inches from the very bottom of the post. I take a one and a half inch wide Forstner bit and drill through approximately two and a half inches. You do wanna try and drill as straight as possible in this application, but it's not something that has to be dead on accurate. The one that really does need to be very accurate is the bottom drill. That's why I took this one so seriously and actually grabbed a level to try and make sure that I was as straight as possible as I'm drilling through the dead center of our posts. I did find it easier to drill a smaller 3 8 inch hole first and then move my way up to a 5 8 drill bit which is needed in this application. With our holes drilled, it's now finally time for installation. We plop it onto our sure tight screw and then use this unique crescent shaped washer, install that first and then install our nut. Now, as you can imagine, a nut in this type of application is fairly difficult to get in place properly, but with a little bit of patience, you're able to get it on, screw it on finger tight and then use a wrench to tighten it down fully. In the previous section, I showed how to install a railing with rosettes, but with this system and how we butt up against the wall, we're actually going to be featuring a half newel. This is basically copying the overall look of the newel post, but in a thinner format, which is a nice way to not only have an aesthetic look, but also provides a considerable amount of extra strength for this railing. That's because we're drilling our railing directly into this post, which is why I'm laying out fastener location holes at the proper height. Just like the rosettes, this post is going to be anchored to the wall, but it also is gonna be resting on the ground, so you get a considerable amount of more strength versus something that's just vertically attached to the drywall. Once I have everything pre-drilled on this post, I then move my way over to the original post and lay out the fastener at this location. This fastener is very similar to our sure tight fastener for our newel that we drilled into the ground, just a smaller version. I pre-drill our hole and just to keep in mind that this hole is centered right into our rail, which means that I've accounted for the two inches of space that I want above the handrail itself, along with adding one and a quarter inch because the overall thickness of the railing is two and a half inches. There's no indent on this screw, so to make it easy to install, I just take a nut along with the combination wrench and tighten it down to the point where our screw threads change. I make sure our newel post is straight with a level and then take a dimension to determine how long our handrail needs to be minus our half newel. 
Once our railing is cut to the appropriate length, I then pre-drill our hole for our railing bolt kit. Now keep in mind that I am using a inch and a half Forstner bit at this location, but it generally specifies a one inch Forstner bit. I figured giving ourselves a little bit of extra space if we can accommodate it is going to be easier on our sanity. And also know ahead of time that these kits do come with their own caps, so we will have an easy way to hide these fasteners. Just remember that you're only pre-drilling one side of your handrail because the other side is getting secured directly to our half newel that we prepped earlier. I insert our rail bolt on one end and then swing the other end into the correct position. Once I have everything lined up with a laser level, which is accounting for the baluster holes that are in the floor, I then know exactly where that half newel needs to be placed. That extra half inch makes it much easier to get this bolt into place on the opposite side, and I highly suggest getting a ratcheting combination wrench, which makes the process of tightening down that nut much easier. We can now make our way to the stairwell. I just should have yelled timber before I did this one. As a general side note, make sure you remove the balusters first before you start cutting away at the handrail. The same exact method of installation was applied here at this location for the box newel, but I did use a larger wrench, which definitely made it easier to install than the first, although it still took plenty of effort and time to get it in there. With both posts level, I can then take a measurement and account for the overall length of railing needed. However, in this application, because it's a little tricky to fit this railing in between these two posts, I have to keep the second post a little loose in order to slide our handrail into the rail bolt kits that are on both sides of the posts. Our ratcheting combination wrench makes quick work of the installation, and after it's fully tightened down, we can double check our levelness, which I must say I am proud of ourselves that that thing is perfectly level the very first time. Speaking of level though, I did have to make some very slight adjustments within this post in order to make sure that it's fully plumb before we can move on to our secondary railing down our stairwell. Unfortunately for us, this railing does have a different installation method at this location, so I'm having to drill out the core plugs first and then removing the screws that are face mounted right here into the stair riser. I also later found out they applied a heavy amount of construction adhesive, which was no match for a few love taps and once out of the way, I also realized that we need to accommodate the thicker size posts. The new posts we're installing are approximately a half inch thicker than the existing posts, which means we have to remove a small amount of stair nosing along with some stair tread. I used my multi-tool and with a very steady hand I tried to cut as cleanly as possible. With that out of the way, I decided to remove the remaining railing on the bottom section, and as we're doing that, I wanted to say a big huge thank you to our sponsor this week, Stair Supplies, who did provide all the materials for this entire project. So if you're in need of a new railing upgrade, make sure you check out the link in the description box below. I will make sure and have a link to all these products along with any of the tools and materials that you see in this video. But now that everything's completely demoed out, it's time to finish up our box newels. Keep in mind that before you demo out any of the railings, you do want to remember to account for the overall height of the existing railing so you can accommodate the new railing with the same measurements. The three inch difference that you see right here is accounting for the overall height difference between the existing post and the new post that we're installing. This means that I have to cut down this post three inches and that not only accounts for the correct height of our post, but also accounts for the correct height of our handrail. Once it's cut down to size, I then pre-drill a few fasteners in the dead center of this post, which is going to complement the same style of installation that was installed previously. These are five and a half inch long screws. In all honesty, I probably would have used longer screws if I didn't already remove these screws to begin with, but knowing that these screws have been there for decades with zero issues of support, then I knew that this was going to accommodate this space very nicely and easily. Just make sure that you're also applying a hefty amount of construction adhesive, just in case. With both post plumb, I can then attach our handrail exactly where I want it to align properly with the post and then just make a nice line indicating exactly what angle each side needs to be cut at. 
in full disclosure, I did give myself a little bit of breathing room with my first cut just to make sure that I had the proper angle, which means I cut the angle needed, but I cut it long. So if anything needed to be adjusted, I could still accommodate it with the same piece. Unfortunately for us, we're not able to use the same box rail kit that we used previously because this is at an angle and that only works on straight runs, which is why we're having this drill straight through the top of the handrail at this location, but we're obviously going to be concealing this with the same plug system that we did previously. Once the top is secured, I then make my way to the bottom and pre-drilled the bottom section, which is what I would have wanted to do at the top section, but in order to get the proper angle with the screw, the top side had to be drilled, but don't worry because we're going to make it look pretty in the end. Our bottom newel was installed just as the one previously, but at an even more awkward angle because this one is the only one where the post doesn't line up perfectly centered with the railing, and that's because it was a curved railing at this location. We're still placing this final newel post exactly where the existing newel post used to be, but we're gonna have to get a bit creative on the handrail itself, which in all honesty, I think turned out even better than what I was expecting to begin with. With this box newel in place, it's time for our final half newel. And this half newel is at a very awkward location and angle due to where the landing meets the wall, which also coincides with the ceiling on the first floor. A little bit tricky and hopefully you don't have to account for this on your project, but on this one, I did. But that's the beauty of remodeling because you always have unique circumstances on your particular project. It's just a matter of knowing that you can account for those discrepancies on your project if you're creative. And as I noted before, this half box rule not only makes it easier to install in terms of fastening, but it also provides a considerable amount of extra strength because it's not only fastened to the wall, but it's also resting on top of our stair landing. I clamp down the handrail exactly where I want it to line up with our newel and then draw a very accurate line on both sides of our handrail. I'm drawing a line on both sides of the handrail because I'm going to have to mount this handrail on the side of this post just as you see here. And in order to make it look as seamless as possible, I'm having to not only cut the very end off, but I'm also going to have to notch out both sides in order for the handrail to lay flush against our post. I'm sure there's a couple different ways of going about making this cut, and if you have any suggestions, please leave it in the comment section. But on this application, I'm sticking with our chop saw and adjusting our depth gauge to accommodate the overall depth that I want to cut. I can then feel assured that I know I'm not going to go too deep into our wood, and I'm able to slide my handrail across the chop saw, and it just drags across while cutting it. It leaves the wood surprisingly smooth for the most part, and it's quite efficient, but I'm still going to be using a sander to sand it down smooth before I get to installation. Once everything's acceptably smooth and even out, I then bring our handrail back to our stairwell and get it fully installed by fastening a few screws into our drywall and then clamping down our handrail to our newel post at the exact location that I want it while pre-drilling my holes on the bottom side and fastening it down securely. But with that, we are done with part one of this handrail. I'm going to keep this into a two-part section because there is so much going on with the balusters themselves, and that deserves a complete and thorough focus on that installation method. But till then, here's a few shots to quench your thirst, and make sure you're subscribed so you're notified when next week's video comes out. But no matter what stage we're at right now, this is truly one beautiful, sexy beast of a railing. Oh yeah.